My name is Tom Gaden. I'm the director of Quillian Center, um, and uh, been blessed to be a part of this ministry for 36 years. Um, the Quillian Center began as a dream of Dr. Paul Quillian. Dr. Quillian was a pastor of First Methodist Church back in the 40s, and he had a vision to create a youth center somewhere in Houston. And he got real excited about this to a point where he actually had blueprints on his desk. And on that day, he died of a heart attack. And it was, just, it was very sad for the congregation. And they, they took up that mantle and they wanted to, to create Paul Quillian's dream and make it come to reality. So therefore, the Quillian Memorial Center was established and um, uh, it took about 10, 15 years for this to get traction, to, to gain property, to get the funding, uh, to build the, uh, the Quillian Center. It was interesting, back in those days, um, uh, Frank Sharp, uh, who developed Sharpstown, and, and uh, Roger Bentliff, who was a uh, prominent attorney in Houston, they were both members of First Methodist Church. Um, Frank Sharp at that time was kind of developing Sharpstown. And Roger Bentliff had some property in Sharpstown. Uh, they they actually flipped properties, and um, and, and Bentliff uh, became the proprietor of the property at Bel Air and Kirkwood. He then deeded over that property to the church, so they could start construction on the Quillian Center. The the Quillian Center that 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 I know of was was built and established uh, in May of 1958 is when uh, they opened up their doors. In uh, 1983, Dr. Bill Henson became pastor of the church and Dr. Henson made a, a point of, of wanting to rehabilitate Quillian Center. So it was in 1984 that they, uh, they built a new swimming pool, new tennis courts, uh, uh, modernized the kitchen, uh, we, we, I guess, reopened the doors in, in uh, June of 84. That's kind of when I came on. Um, yeah, we, we started programming uh, the Quillian Center, not as a, as a, just a First Methodist Church recreation center, but a, as a community recreation center. We established programs um, such as Mother's Day Out, uh, after school programs, uh, youth sports, youth basketball, soccer, baseball. Uh, we worked closely with the A-Leaf School District, the, um, uh, there, there was an FFA barn at, on the property. Uh, we worked closely with the Little League and the, and the uh, local uh, football, uh, youth football uh, groups, soccer groups. Um, had a lot of fun there. And, and, and yeah, yeah. That center um, was really in a neighborhood that was up and growing. About 92, the church, um, had a vision really to, to grow from downtown. They wanted to build uh, a church on the west side of Houston. So they found a parcel here uh, at, at, in, in the West Chase District area. Um, but in order for them to, to really purchase this facility or this, this land here in West Chase, uh, they needed to sell the, the property in A-Leaf. So the city of Houston uh, was a, a, a perfect um, uh, buyer for that. Uh, Parks and Recreation stepped right in and uh, uh, began programming, much like we were uh, back in 92-93. Uh, yeah. hundreds of students participate in the summer program uh, and the after-school enrichment program as well as the sports program. Uh, 
my organization, we partnered with the city and had the opportunity uh, to work with hundreds of kids and teach them the funda fundamentals and basics of basketball, uh, align them with caring adults in the after school enrichment program, uh, and then do things uh, like have individuals support their academic enrichment needs in the summer around summer learning loss, as well as uh, the integral part of using the pool as a resource to teach kids how to swim and how to be safe around water. Um, I remember my younger years, um, I started organizing at about 17, 18 years old. And I remember when we were organizing out here, uh, my mentor, Maureen Haver, uh, was one of the individuals that really kind of helped me kind of dig deep into those questions I would ask of why is it that a lot of young people out in our community are, are not receiving the support or necessary resources and being able to help them advance. And um, in my younger years, I remember we started a youth group called uh, Unified Hoods, uh, which was an acronym. Hoods was an acronym for helping out others during struggles. So it was Unified Hoods and it was derived of youth and young adults um, you know, we came from different backgrounds, um, not a positive upbringing. We all had stories and experiences to share. And through that process, we started to talk about, you know, how was this impacting us? What were what some of the root causes and how this could have uh, been able to have uh, been altered? If there was other opportunities and uh, uh, support and resources and a lending ear for the young community in the early 2000s, by that time, um, I was already a teenager and the community center wasn't the hangout spot, you know. I didn't hear much of uh, what was going on, uh, what, what would be able to be offered that would intrigue my attention and being able to participate in the events. And so we started organizing. We, all, we actually started to meet here at the community center, started hosting meetings, started to collaborate uh, with an organization that was called Texans Together. Um, that was one of the building blocks that helped us start to really identify uh, the issues that existed here and how that correlated to some of our outcomes. Uh, in the early 2000s, this zip code was one of the highest contributing um, zip codes for youth and young adult incarceration. And uh, many peers that I knew that I grew up with um, um, had encountered those type of backgrounds and experiences and um, many didn't have a very positive uh, outcome in life. And so for us, we wanted to struggle in, 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 in challenging the powers that, that existed to start to ask those questions, why? Um, why weren't these programs in existence to be able to help youth and young adults have a safe space, an opportunity space? And then through those conversations, we started to realize that um, we weren't the only generation that was being impacted by that. You know, we had our seniors that also didn't have a space to, to be able to go to. We did this painted these with a bunch of A-Leaf kids. Once the Parks Department had decided that, that this building was going to come down, it would, would have been foolish to put uh, too much extra money into it. So we got a bunch of volunteers and we painted these columns, we painted that wall, we painted bookcases that, that are in, this, uh, in these rooms. Twice, I think, we painted those. So it made it look a little bit better. Uh, these are the classrooms that are used for the ESL uh, classrooms uh, each week. And we had two empty shelter events here. Uh, this, this room, the first room was used like our, our cafe, and this room was used for pack washing. Uh, at the two events here at, in, in Ailey, the empty shelter events, we uh, spayed or neutered the empty shelter project, spayed or neutered over 1,000 animals for free for the uh, people of Ailey. 2001 is when I first started working here. I, I have no idea what I was doing before that, but 2001, uh, MJ Khan was the uh, city council member at the time, and there was a renovation going on and some improvements being made, so I've got pictures of 2001 when we were all out here um, with, with, the, with the Parks Department and the uh, council member and they were making some improvements in this building because the building at that time was uh, probably 50 years old. Probably the best memories I have here are the trees that we planted. 
Uh, we planted them on the west side and uh, uh, behind us here, we planted several hundred trees. And there were, there were literally hundreds of volunteers out here and those trees look better and better every year. So those are, those are my happiest memories of the tree plantings and the, the long range effect that they had. We always had a lot of kids that would come out not only for the tree plantings, but we have painted the, uh, inside the building, we painted the gym, we painted uh, bookcases. Kids did that, and and uh, I think it was uh, all done in the spirit of volunteerism, and it's a good memory for me. So for me, I, I have great memories of this community center from this being our rallying point to meet up to go canvas the local community, meeting up to play sports, uh, just hanging out, uh, hosting community meetings, attending community meetings. Uh, but now thinking about this new facility, it's, it's exciting, it's a blessing to the community, and it only just adds to the amplification of what's to come for generations. Um, this will be an opportunity space, a space that will be able to now offer for both young and old anything that they wish to want to see in existence. Uh, a safe space where our young people now have a centralized location in their community uh, to be able to go to, um, you know, when school is out, or on the weekend, uh, spend time with your family, yeah, you know, so this is only going to add to the historical significance of this facility with a new facility being built and uh, building new memories. I think the new neighborhood community center is phenomenal. Uh, to have the opportunities to speak with the mayor's office and help be a part of getting the ball rolling and picking up where other leaders in the community have taken the conversations around the needs of a new facility, it's amazing. Uh, just to see what our initial thoughts were and what our vision was, to be able to see now that there's three departments coming together to work uh, in Parks and Rec and Health and Human Services and Library in a way that's not been done in our city. Uh, it truly shows that you know we have dreams and visions, but uh, when we bring them together, it can be extended to beyond what we ever even thought. Uh, to be able to have a one-stop shop where families can come and take part in activities in Parks and Rec, come to a gym, come to a class, come to a civic engagement meeting, also have their needs met through women and infant care or through the health department. Uh, it really is something that's special right on the bus line. All the things that we talked about and discussed that would be uh, beneficial for our families. Uh, it truly is a blessing and something that I'm looking forward to seeing, not only uh, in the next coming years, but in the future for the next generations. This is Jose Casanel, and I'm very proud of Councilwoman Tiffany, what she's done in three months, not never done before. I'm very proud of her to have her as our Councilwoman. Thank you. Hi, this is Natasha Butler, and hi, I am so excited about receiving my brick today. And this is a special reward for our Alien Community Center as it's being rebuilt. So I want to take a special shout out to our Councilwoman. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. I want to thank Council Councilwoman from the, the Ailey Community Center. I've been in the community for about 10 years and I have used that center 